Hello, I'm Alpha Garza and I'm presenting CHIRP, or Control Flow History Reuse Prediction. Translation look-aside buffers, or TLBs, lie on the critical path to accessing memory. On the TLB hit, the processor benefits from a quick virtual to physical address translation. However, on a miss, the address translation must be looked up via the page table in a process called a page table walk, possibly requiring multiple memory access and computations. Intel's recent Sunny Cove core architecture, for example, has a five-level Radix page tabling structure. As one can imagine, this lookup process is slow and time-consuming relative to processing speeds, incurring up to hundreds of extra cycles in penalty. Because TLBs are on this critical path, they are limited in their size and reach due to timing, power, and area constraints. To make matters worse, newer compute workloads trend ever larger in code footprint and working set sizes, putting tremendous stress on the critical path. To lessen the page walk penalty, structures like hierarchical TLBs and special MMU caches have been proposed, but scaling the memory wall offers architects only so much. Recent Intel architectures reveal L2 TLB miss penalties above 100 cycles each, even with some of these mitigation techniques in place. As such, TLBs must make the best use of their small sizes and maintain only useful page translations that are likely to be re-referenced. This inspires our goal of improving TLB performance without necessitating increased TLB sizes or extending the hierarchies. We note that the least recently used policy seems ubiquitous in TLBs, but surprisingly find little else mentioned in the literature. Sometimes we see random replacement being used, but not much else. We also note that TLBs have access patterns similar to caches, albeit at a larger granularity, from 64 byte blocks for caches to 4 kilobytes for a page. Also, TLBs are tags that associated with SRAM arrays, much like caches. So why not apply prior predictive replacement policies to TLBs? We consider the two current known TLB replacement policies, LRU and random, and three cache-based policies, which are SRRIP, or static re-reference interval prediction, SHIP, or signature-based hit prediction, and GHRP, global history reuse prediction. We focus on the L2 TLB because it has been found to account for the most of the cycles spent in the TLB mishandler. However, we have a problem. They don't seem very effective for TLB replacement. To the right is a heat map which shows hot and cold TLB entries for various benchmarks of interest among the replacement policies considered. To the bottom, you can see the replacement policies named. Darker colored entries denote TLB entries that are dead or not re-referenced often. These entries should be kicked out to make way for more useful data. Optimally, we wish a heat map to show light-colored entries signifying frequent entry re-referencing, a sign of a useful caching structure. Surprisingly, even random replacement maintains hotter entries in the TLB compared to LRU. By applying these predictive replacement policies, we have made the following observations. First, the replacement algorithm inaccuracies seem to be due to conflicts within sets, not among sets. We find that a TLB entry may experience many hits from one or more PCs that map to the same entry before it is eventually evicted. This is because a large range of unique addresses map to the same entry in the TLB compared to accesses to a block of in cache. There is a big difference between 64 bytes and 4 kilobytes. This follows to the second observation that the coarse grain nature of TLBs results in increased aliasing. This causes the prediction counters of policies to saturate too quickly, rendering the predictors ineffective. A good TLB replacement policy needs to be a bit more selective in when to update its prediction counters so as to avoid such oversaturation. Third, while previous work has shown that longer PC histories benefit predictive replacement policies in the LC and iCache, this is not the case in the TLB. Branch path history does seem to help, though. This is likely due to the fact that the L2 TLB accesses come from both data and instructions in the first level TLBs. Conditional branch histories, in particular, can reflect data accesses when the global path history may not. These observations lead us to proposing CHIRP, Control Flow History Reuse Prediction. CHIRP indexes a prediction table using a history signature specially designed to correlate with TLB behavior. It reduces L2 TLB misses by 28.21% over LRU with just one kilobyte of hardware overhead off the critical path. CHIRP yields a geometric mean speed up of 4.8% over the LRU. In the heat map on the right, we now have a new column for CHIRP at the rightmost. As you can see, this column is quite light compared to the other columns. This means that the entries in a CHIRP-based TLB 
are much hotter and much more likely to be re-referenced, showing that Chirp is a good replacement policy for maintaining hot sets. As we mentioned, Chirp uses a specially designed history signature made by combining three control flow histories with a current time PC. Making the signature a combination rather than keeping all the histories as signatures reduces hardware storage and prediction times. Note that we store PC value history, not outcome history. Specific order bits from branch and path PCs are stored and then combined together to form the signature. More information on signature generation, including which bits are used, shifted, and how they're combined and stored can be found in the paper. For now, it's sufficient to know that this signature is stored in its associated TLB entry and is used to index the chirp prediction table. The reuse prediction for the entry is also stored within the TLB entry. This prediction is computed beforehand by the previous access to the entry. The diagram to the right shows how a TLB entry signature leads to its own reuse prediction being calculated. First, the signature in the TLB entry is hashed to index the chirp prediction table. Next, the index counter is thresholded, and if found to be greater than the threshold, a prediction that the entry is dead is placed in the TLB entry. If the counter is less than the threshold, a prediction that the entry is alive is placed instead. This stored prediction is, quote, one ahead, as in the prediction stored is for the next time the entry is accessed. This ensures the prediction computation is off the critical path. Chirp only accesses the prediction table during two events. Remember, due to high granularity, limited counter modification is necessary to ensure that oversaturation is avoided. One event is on a hit to a TLB set that is different from the last one accessed. We call this policy selective hit update and helps reduce the number of table accesses, minimizes counter saturation, and alone helps reduce average MPKI, or misses per 1000 instructions, by 5.85%. A bit to track this quote first hit is kept for each TLB entry, but isn't shown here. We use the hit TLB entry signature to index the table and decrement the corresponding 2-bit counter. The other event is on a TLB miss where there are no predicted dead entries in the set. Thus, we select the victim by LRU policy. We use this victim signature to index the table and increment the counter value. The hardware overhead for Chirp is quite small, on the order of kilobytes, depending on the chosen prediction table size. We tested from 512 entries to 2048 entries in the prediction table. The structures are the modified L2 TLB and Chirp's own prediction table and the miscellaneous history registers necessary for signature generation. Chirp does require modification to the L2 TLB to store its metadata, but so would any prediction scheme, including LRU. Our methodology had us extend the simulating infrastructure used in the recent Championship Value Prediction Competition, or CVP1. To avoid overfitting, we tested our replacement policies on over 870 industry source long and short traces offered for CVP1. The types of workloads vary greatly and include the tried and true spec, database traces, and also big data traces. Short traces were simulated to completion, and long traces were warmed up and then run for 100 million instructions. We measured misses per 1,000 instructions, or MPKI, and also instructions per cycle, or IPC. Replacement policies modeled were LRU and random, the original TLB replacement policies, and SRRIP, SHIP, GHRP, and of course, CHIRP. The hardware configuration we simulated is shown in this table. Most of interest is the Chirpified L2 Unified TLB, where we varied the TLB miss penalty from between 20 to 360 cycles. The left-hand plot shows the speed-up results over LRU for these varied L2 TLB miss penalties. Note that as the L2 TLB miss penalty increases, so do the speed-ups offered by predictive policies. Chirp speed-up value increases the fastest and surpasses 10% for latencies greater than 320 cycles, not out of the realm of possibility given computing workload trends. Other policies, however, flatten out to a max speed up of 3% by the 320 cycle mark. From this plot, only assuming a 150 cycle miss penalty, we generate the box and whisker plot on the right. Note how random outperforms LRU overall, if only a little bit, at 0.42%. 
SHIP and GHRP do little better than LRU at 0.13 and 0.94% respectively. This is likely due to the latencies incurred from their multiple accesses to their prediction tables. In the middle of the pack is SRRIP at 1.65%. CHIRP outperforms them all at 4.8% speed up, however. Even with reduced prediction table sizes, CHIRP can still offer MPKI improvements. At just a 128-byte prediction table, CHIRP improves MPKI by 7%, much more than any of the other policies at full size. In our configuration space on industry sources, CHIRP comprises a 6% TLB overhead with a 1-kilobyte prediction table. While CHIRP is more complex than LRU, it is still lightweight because it has to be, due to the timing constraints that the TLB is under. Large pages, for example, of the size 2 megabytes or up to even 1 gigabyte, are increasingly being supported in hardware, and they theoretically can reduce capacity misses. In this work, we focused on the more common 4 kilobyte page, but we would like to support to variable size pages. However, this opens up a can of worms. For example, consider having two TLB entries, where one maps a 4 kilobyte page and the other a 2 megabyte page. When we need to evict one, which one do we keep in the TLB? The answer is not so simple. Most would think maybe the 2 megabyte it has that large spatial locality that we need, but we also have to account for the cost of moving large pages to and from memory. We also have to consider whether the 4 kilobyte page may suffice or not, or if it's getting re-referenced enough to say this one's more useful than the 2 megabyte page. This moves the problem from being just a simple replacement problem for the general caching problem to actually being much more complex because the entries are not uniform anymore. They have a different reward. It's kind of like the knapsack problem, but you have a timing constraint. It's kind of exciting. Of course, there are also other practical issues such as memory fragmentation that you need to account for and also partitioning choices of how many large pages to support in the TLV or, or small pages. So all these things have to be considered. In conclusion, this work investigated the effect of replacement policy within TLBs. We show how previous predictive policies for other caching structures are not plug and play for the TLB. We then introduce CHIRP, which indexes a prediction table by using a history signature specially designed to correlate with TLB behavior. CHIRP reduces L2 TLB misses by 28.21% over LRU with a 1 kilobyte hardware overhead that is off the critical path. CHIRP yields a geometric mean speed up of 4.8% over LRU. And that is it for my presentation. Thank you very much, and I hope we can see each other physically soon in the future.